So today we're going to talk about the Viper Harbor comp because ever since Loud first started running uh, the Viper Harbor on quite a few different maps to be honest, other teams have now started to integrate it as we saw Loud be quite successful with it at lock-in. And so we've seen on quite a few of the different maps that Harbor Viper is becoming quite popular with a number of different teams. However, there is a pretty big problem and that pretty big problem is that those teams that are running Harbor Viper aren't winning that often. In fact, a team playing a Harbor Viper comp against a team who is not playing a Harbor Viper comp, the team that is running the Harbor Viper is only winning 35% of their games right now, which when considering this is meant to be the meta on quite a few maps, 35% non-mirror win rate is very, very low. And when you consider that Loud themselves are accounting for some of those wins that the Viper Harbor comps are getting because they're still playing it, it makes it look even more bleak if you are a team not named Loud running the Harbor Viper comp. So let's dig into the comp then, what it does well, what it does not so well, and maybe why Loud are successful with it, but seemingly not too many others are. But let's start with Loud's success at lock-in, because of course Loud did find success, so it would seem like, yeah, this must be at least a decent comp, uh, but of course, Loud did have one advantage back at lock-in that perhaps even they don't have right now, and that is the surprise factor. Of course, when Loud first started running this comp, you know, not many others, if anyone, was really playing it alongside them, and therefore, it was going to be difficult for teams to, you know, know what to expect or be able to anti-strap, particularly in a tournament in a kind of shorter time window format where, you know, you would be, be playing a game maybe with only one day's break, you know, it's going to be difficult to anti-strat and really find maybe even a scrim partner who's going to actually play that comp against you. It might be quite difficult to find that and therefore Loud had a big surprise factor and could throw things at their opponents that they'd never seen before. And let's start to look at some of the strengths then of the Viper Harbor comp and we'll start with Loud versus DRX back at lock-in and these two teams are actually early adopters of uh, the Viper Harbor comp. Both of them are playing it here on Pearl and uh, we're going to see DRX are on the attacking side and they are going to blitz in and we see instantly some of the strengths, right? Obviously you play Viper Harbor, you have a lot of smokes, you can deny line of sight, which is a very common Harbor Cascade, they got the Viper Wall even down here. They're going to put a Harbor Wall up there as well. So you can have kind of constant smokes going up as well. That's kind of one of the big advantages. Uh, but that's going to be true for both sides, actually, as uh, in come DRX with uh, their Harbor Wall just there. You see their Harbor Wall goes up. And then as soon as that Harbor Wall goes down, you know, they'll be ready to put up the Viper Wall. But we see that Loud say, yeah, we know what you're going to do because we run this comp as well. We're not just going to sit behind this wall all day. We need to go now as you're planning the spike. They Harbor Alt and they're ready to just send it in as well. And they now have the same effect, right? Where they can put up this Viper Wall and then they can put up a Harbor Wall and you get the constant walling off. So, you know, no one can really just come and play down here on B Long because you have kind of constant line of sight denial as long as your Viper and Harbor are alive. And so that forces teams to play more on the site, uh, which when you're retaking B is quite handy because as we all know, you know, retaking down this B site can be a bit of a pain. Let's even kills himself with a Viper Molly there, his own Viper Molly. But either way, they get a very successful retake. And now you see, even with the Kildra lockdown, again, they're going to be able to create some chaos with this Harbor Wall, right? These two are now probably, you know, panicking a bit, even though they get the two players detained, you know, a tap comes on the spike and they're just having to kind of guess and kind of pray and hope that, you know, they aren't on the spike at this point. And so, you know, it's good from Loud. They use this wall to their advantage uh, very much so. And you see by the time it starts to go down, it's already over for DRX. And this is kind of one of the strengths, as we see for both sides, that you just kind of have constant smokes going up on the right sites. Also, there's examples like this where you can do more progressive walls as well. This is from Fnatic versus Loud here on Icebox. And, uh, you know, they've got the regular old Viper wall up here on B, right? Nothing really too crazy about that. But they're about to do a Harbor wall, which is going to allow them to take more space than just the regular Viper wall, right? So in goes this Harbor wall just here. And now they're ready to actually push it even deeper and push it real deep in onto the site. And you can see... Boaster here, maybe not super familiar with what exactly they're about to do because he puts a Viper Molly on kind of where you would expect a normal plant, but Loud are pushing super, super deep, right? And so they've pushed all the way 
really really deep and again this is one of the advantages you can get by playing this comp is that on a map like icebox where it might be difficult for you know any other controller to kind of you know be able to smoke that deep you both get the normal viper wall maybe if things aren't going as well as you hope but then you also get this deeper harbor wall coming in as well where you can go and push you know very very deep like loud do here and that forces a retake that is very very difficult for Fnatic when they're trying to come in through this way and you've got a crossfire from both sides and you see all the blue x's there in the middle and that's no surprise because of how loud played this round also this comp can be a nightmare for operator players uh taco lia here for leviathan is going to have an operator this is actually a round that leviathan win but you'll see you know when you have this operator right you're going to want to make a difference you're going to want to find the first kill but if you're in the wrong spot and you start getting hit by harbor utility yeah, good luck, right? Because this wall is, I mean, just look at him. He's just going to end up staring at a wall. And that's not exactly where you want to be. We're going to get a little look at Victor uh, kind of having a little whiffy fight with Shy there. Uh, but they're going to come in towards this uh, A site, our NRG. And you'll see again, we've got this up, you know, down here now. So they've pushed the up back to a, a pretty safe spot here. And as NRG start to come in towards this A site, you'll see again, it's just a nightmare for Taco Lea to try and deal with all of this as the harbor ult comes in and now this harbor wall comes in and then uh you know i mean sometimes not actually happens in the shrine because they have the harbor ult but you know a lot of the time you'll get a, a harbor cascade in here as well and actually later on in the post plant they will get that you see takalia he's getting stunned he has to just push back the cove's going up he can't stop the plant in any way with an operator right so he has to just kind of sit back here and then you'll see in just a second we're about to get this uh harbor cascade there as well and you see tackle he's like ready to peek around this corner with the dog and it's like oh there's another wall there right and against certain comps on certain maps as well where they might not have flashes particularly on icebox less so on pearl but on icebox that can be a, a real possibility you know at some point they're just going to have to push through a wall um and so you see the danger that this can cause for operate players as well where you just end up staring at a wall the whole time and you're basically just taken out of the round but as I said, a lot of teams are actually struggling with this comp. So what is going wrong for these teams? Well, I think probably the first thing is that these other teams don't have Tui's, okay? Because Tui's is a very, very good Harbor player. And it's clear that he has put in the time to learn Harbor and play Harbor at a very, very high level. And a lot of these other teams have harbor players who clearly have not done that uh, for instance here is one example right i mean just straight off the rip this is loud versus calming core here at lock-in and straight off the bat we can see this harbor wall would Tuiz ever do this harbor wall absolutely not because Tuiz is better at harbor than this wall because Tuiz can do a wall from this angle where he can curve it around there and even get the wall to come all the way across here which would block the line of sight of this viper as well which would actually cause a lot of problems if the map looked like this for the defending team but for calming core and newsera here He's not so good at harbor, so he just does this little simple wall that doesn't block the line of sight of the viper, and so that viper is kind of chilling. And you'll see as we go forward in this round as well, you can just kind of tell that Tui's knows what he's doing. He knows when to use his utility. He knows the positions to be to use his utility. Because actually, this is going to end up being a 5v3 that uh, Loud actually managed to win. Um, I mean, they kind of get a crazy kill. It's kind of a, a bizarre calming core round because, of course, it is. But, you know, Sadak gets a bit adventurous right there and he ends up losing his life very quickly to his, you know, comes up with this wall very, very quick, protecting his Viper, protecting this area of mid, right, right on the fly, right in the right position to do that straight away. Then they're in a 4v5 and, and I suppose thinks, oh, I've missed that Prowler. I'm, I'm just good here. But somehow, somehow, uh calming call managed to kill him here i mean this looks like it should be free but it's good from nevera holding that and we end up in a 5v3 they come back towards a but guess who's here two and he knows what he's doing on this harbor right he knows how to use his utility he avoids the fade horn just there and now he's not gonna find just nevera but now he knows okay don't panic don't panic we've got a wall coming in on the a site here from calming call they're coming in through art so what does he do he sends that wall in there repositions himself does get hit by the fade horn uh, fade ult, sorry, but then, you know, sends in that wall as well, completely sections himself off and manages to get one, two, and then now is just chilling with the spike, right? You can see he knows how to play this agent, and basically he solo won that round for loud. But as I said, we saw it from New Zero there, but there's been plenty of other examples. I really could pick up a lot of different games here where the person playing Harbor just has no idea how to play Harbor. Probably the worst one that I saw, and I'm sorry for this, Zeke, was probably Zeke. It was so bad that... 
They actually played one game with Zeke on Harbour and then decided that Mixwell is now a Harbour because Zeke was so bad at it. I mean, we're getting some, you know, some walls like this again, which is just kind of just, just missing the mark, uh, especially when you compare it to someone like uh, Tui's again. Um, but you'll see we were missing, uh, you know, cascade walls as well, uh, as you'll see as, as Heretics come in uh, towards A. This isn't their first game uh, of uh, the EMEA League against Foot. And there was countless examples of Zeke missing walls and missing cascades and, and all of that kind of stuff as they start to come in here uh, towards this A site. And actually, you know, I mean, yeah, this is just the second round or whatever, but, uh, you know, there was just there was just so many examples of, of this, right, where this, this cascade wall is stopping, it, you know, not in the right place. Obviously, you would ideally probably want it here instead. Uh, but no, it stops there. And there was plenty of examples of Zeke, you know, stopping a wall like that where you could still actually see through it i mean it, it was it was it was not good let's put it that way and, and there's been plenty of examples of this though of people missing you know harbor util or using it in very bizarre kind of ways that don't really make any sense and uh this again is probably one of the big reasons why these teams aren't doing so well and then another problem for a lot of these teams is it seems that some of them just don't know how to play the comp they aren't cascading their utility at the right time they're doing stuff like this where, you know, we're using this harbor util seemingly just because we've got it, right? We're not really thinking about what we're doing. We're just kind of using it. And this is an example from EG versus 100 Thieves where, I mean, Jorgmo sends out this harbor wall here. But, I mean, he can see the viper wall that 100 Thieves have down, right? Like, like this is right by his feet when he when he sends out this first wall. So, so he surely must know that the 100 Thieves wall is there. And like, yeah, okay, you want to fake pressure, but this can never really fake pressure with this 100 Thieves wall because even if you were pushing this, if they put up this wall, what, are you just going to run through it? Are you just going to wait for them to drop it and die? Like, you know, you can't simulate, you know, this pressure against this wall. It, it, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, this wall that 100 Thieves have put down pre-round you know, tells you that you kind of can't do that. And and they were going for it and never found really anything from it. 100 Thieves just walked past it like they did in every single round. And, you know, now they start to come in towards the site. Ethan actually does manage to get this first kill on Stella, but gets traded by the, the Silver Ult there. But now we see kind of the second thing, which is they put the Harbor and the Viper Wall up at the same time, right? We've got both the Harbor and the Viper here on the site. And both walls, you can just kind of see here, are up at the same time. So what do 100 Thieves do? Well, they do what every team's going to do in that situation. They're just going to wait. <laughs> you know, there's no reason to run through both walls at the same time. And, uh, you know, eventually Comb realizes and kind of puts his wall down. Uh, but, you know, he's used kind of half of his fuel already. And so, again, 100 Thieves just wait. And now there's no smokes there, which, you know, is kind of the whole point of this comp is that you can, you know, kind of consistently smoke it off bang just bangs them and uh yeah 100 thieves won the round and there was countless examples and there have been countless examples from you know not just this game but i mean many many games uh of this comp where teams just seem to throw out the harbor utility because they can because they've got it without really understanding or you know where that harbor utility should come in crucially when that harbor utility should be coming in it just seems like the mastery isn't there on that agent for a lot of these teams. And that's probably one of the big reasons why teams that are playing it are tending to not win. So all in all, is Harbor Viper a bad comp? Should uh, no one ever run it ever? No. If you're loud, it's probably working because you have a Harbor who knows what they're doing and you in kind of invented the comp so you know how the comp works and what you want to do with the comp. So it makes sense to run it for a team like loud. If you are a team that does not have a good Harbor player, then probably don't run it. Probably run something else because you'd probably be better off.